Fiction. My name is Devin. I'm joined by my co-host, Nick, who's hanging out, and our guest, Benny. And today, we are going to talk about some awesome stuff. Namely, we've got a, we've got a four-in-one episode of uh, some guys that kind of, they're not as big as the other ones that we've gotten into, but they're still important. So, uh, gentlemen, you want to introduce yourselves and say hi? All right. Hey, everybody. It's me, Nick. Hello. I hope you're having a fantastic day, no matter what time you're listening to this. Uh, I'm Benny, and I'm the resident nerd. <laughs> nerd! Sorry. Yeah, this guy likes Power Rangers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Still plays with his Power Ranger toys. Hey, did you? Hey, Benny, did you ever have the Power Ranger toys that like you <laughs> pressed on the chest and like it flipped? Like it flipped the head. I had one. Oh, they, they were so one. cool. They're pretty anyway. dope. Okay. Anyway, oh, sorry. Okay. So, um, I believe uh, the first one we're going to talk about is uh, Episcopalians. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. And the reason we're talking about them is because. Uh, they believe in this thing called the middle way or the middle passage that we talked about in the Protestantism episode. And so they're attempting to find a way, a middle way between being Protestant and being Catholic. And they're trying to kind of like almost reconcile um, both systems of, of worship really, because um, their worship services tend to be, tend to kind of be Catholic catholic-esque so they're like heavy liturgical and um it, it feels a lot it can feel a lot like a like a catholic church and they do a lot of the same rituals um that the roman catholic church does mm -hmm. so they're 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 interesting uh, they it, at one point they were anglican um and because of the american revolution now they call themselves episcopalians and um, they're part of the overall Anglican community and they adhere to the, um, so their system of government is they have a priest and their local church. And then above them, they have bishops. And then I don't know if there's one more level, uh, but the, the granddaddy of Episcopalianism and of Anglicanism is, uh, this guy named the, the Bishop of Canterbury in mm. Canterbury, England. Mm -hmm. And he is the soft equivalent, the closest thing they have to a pope, though it's not a parallel. Yeah, I was about to say I, they don't adhere to the pope. They go as high as bishops, um, because the word for bishop in Greek is episkopos, which is uh, uh -huh. what they get their name from, which translates to overseer. Overseer, yeah. So that's as high as they go, just about. Well, they, I, I'm pretty sure they adhere to the bishop of Canterbury, but. It, like I said, it's not, it's not like in the Catholic Church where the Pope, the Pope's whatever the Pope says is law. Like, yeah, it's it's also it's also kind of like the Greek Orthodox Church how they have the, uh, the Bishop of, uh, I think it's like the Bishop of Constantinople or something who is like the first among equals. Mm. Oh yeah, mm. yeah, the first among equals. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, so I, I think it's that thing, but the the Bishop of Canterbury is. Considered mm -hmm. to be the overall leader of uh, the Anglican community, which includes the Episcopalian Church. And um, I believe, if I remember correctly, I believe that actually they uh, they actually uh, got a black one. Like the guy who's kind of running it is a black guy, which is um, in religious terms, obviously in governmental terms and stuff like that, that's nothing new. And that's as it should be in religious terms. That's actually kind of a new thing. So, uh, um, the Bishop of Canterbury is black, so you're I believe so, yes. Like know. the head bishop, I believe, uh, is currently black. I could be incorrect, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, it is a black guy, which is awesome. So, um, normally I go into statistics starting this out. Um, if you guys, I mean, if you guys want to look into that and see if I'm wrong, that's cool, but uh, I'm do that. cool, <clears throat> thank you. I have the, um, I had some of the history pulled up. If you wanted to go into that as well. Yeah. Or their, um, we also have their I, core I tenants say, and all that. Statistically, I couldn't find a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, I have... This is it's like 1.23 of Americans or something. It's not it's not the biggest thing, especially when we're talking about massive like organizations like Catholicism mm -hmm. or um, yeah. 
you know, even, even like some of the Protestant organizations. So there's not a lot of them. Um, but uh, yeah, Nick, you want to you want to hit some history? Sure. Uh, I do have a history and a statistic at the same time. It's a weird fact. A quarter of U.S. presidents have been Episcopalians. No way. Uh, no way. So yeah. 11 of the presidents um, from the 20th century have been uh, identified as Episcopalians. Uh, George Washington, James Madison, James Monroe, Henry William Harrison, or William Henry Harrison, John Tyler, Zachary Taylor, Franklin Pierce, Chester A. Arthur, Franklin D. Roosevelt, General Gerald Ford, and George H. W. Bush. So, hey, Daddy Bush was a Episcopalian. Apparently, and that's what I've got for here. On I know that. Yeah. Um, How could you be an Episcopalian and and a and a and a Republican though? Their I mean their um, ideals stand completely against Republican ideals, which we're going to get into. Well, that's that's where I have something else that's interesting is that the Episcopal Church accepts and adorns or uh, and ordains people that other denominations would not. Um, I have a fa another thing here, according to Christianity.com. According to the Episcopal Church, it affirms the dignity and equality of all human beings and welcomes all people without any exceptions of race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, orientation, age, or any yep. other reason. Also, what has been met with both condemnation and celebration from Christian community is Episcopal, the Episcopal Church accepts women and LGBT people into their ordained ministry. Correct. So, yeah, that's one of... That's one of the of the big differences between Episcopalianism and, and other um, denominations of Protestantism is that they they will ordain uh, women and homosexuals, whereas I mean let, let's see the Episcopalians do it, oh. the Methodists oh do it. Uh, we just had a um, the oh um, PCUSA, which is the Presbyterian, they do it. Uh, I think those are the main three, and and. I think I don't know, but I know Anglicans, Anglicans for sure ordain mm. um, women, but I don't know about the uh, homosexuality. But I know Episcopalians for a fact mm -hmm. they they will ordain pretty much anybody. True. Yeah, I actually had this. I actually had the information on the first uh, gay bishop that was ordained, mm. but uh, I I can't seem to find it at the moment. But um, yeah, they are incredibly like they're they're uh, they're very very liberal in that aspect. Yeah. Uh, which I appreciate because this is something you don't see often in mm. mainline religion. So that's that's pretty cool. But that's why it was confusing that George, you know Bush Senior, who was a Republican, would be Episcopal because nothing. I'm not nothing against my Republican brothers and sisters, but Republican is these days tied in with conservatism. Maybe it wasn't so much when he was up coming up, but it's tied in with conservatism, and conservatism is normally tied with the suppression of rights mm. for. Um, of people not only of uh, sexualities but also in many cases of color. So and that's and that's very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe maybe if uh, some of our <laughs> current political people were Episcopalian, maybe things would be a little bit. Political yeah. views are uh, um, Devons <laughs> and that oh, they're not represent because, <laughs> like I, you know, I'm I'm not a Republican. Uh, I'm not I'm either. Not really... Neither. Yeah. I don't oh, think what? any of us are. Do you think for a second I'd be? Yeah. A no. Definitely. Oh my gosh. That's what I'm trying to say is like I'm not a Republican, but I don't know if I would go as far as to say to agree with the statement that you made about the whole suppression of rights thing. Um, but anyway, uh, so the oh, bitch bro. Uh, uh, I, okay, we uh, we won't we won't get into that right now. But I we can we can talk about this offline. There's there's definitely evidence, being, especially specifically with like Reagan and stuff. But we'll we'll, we'll this is this be, for. To be fair, oh, both parties gosh. have done it. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, people will always do that. But anyway, I'm just kind of talking more current day. But I mean, this isn't a political podcast. What what no, what party started not. the KKK? Can oh my gosh! Me? Okay, stop, 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 stop. Yeah, stop, but the Dixie. Stop. But the thing is, is the oh Dixie Democrats. What happened was there was a complete swap over. So today's modern day Republicans are the Dixie. Oh they're, no, gosh, it's not. This is history. They're the Dixie Democrats. And so, Available. because every time I argue with my dad about these, like Democrat store the KKK, it's like, no, dude, they there was a complete swap, and um, and of course it's debatable. Everything in history is debatable, but that's historically what's been understood. Now, um, I don't have any real preference when it comes to politics. I think that, I think that like people are flawed, and I think that no matter who's running the country, 
we will always see flawed people doing flawed things. Um, I will say that uh, I'm trying I'm trying to dance around the issue because I don't want to like blow my cover as far as who I am and stuff like that. But I'll say this: I do think that a little bit of the um, the the evangelicals and certain religious uh, certain parties certain political parties getting in bed with each other is harmful to the country. Um, but anyway, I'm not trying to judge anybody or say anything what anybody should do. And I also also should state for the record that my political views are not the ones shared by my friends here, but I still like them. Yeah. So, so um, uh, I mean, well, I was gonna bring it back to the history no, real no. quick, <laughs> but we have we have three more to go through. What I was going to say real quick is that uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury is, in fact, not black. Um, Damn. Just, Dang. Sorry. Uh, his, He's... his name is Justin Webley. He's some white guy. Oh, Welby. Um, oh, man. That would have been really cool. I'm sorry about that. Sorry for false information, guys. My bad. It's all good. But so the history of the Episcopal Church is that it um, it's an American uh, sect or... Uh, denomination it came from it originated from the church of england which in turn comes from the roman catholic church and the protestant reformation but it was established independent of the england church during the revolution so that's where a lot of them a lot of our founding fathers were uh episcopalians we get it because it was right there at the revolution um so just as the uh, united states was the first of many former colonies to seek uh, independence from England. The Episcopal Church led away from a series of independent churches of England tradition uh, established over the world. So it, it was, um, it's separated from the Church of England, but it's based off the Church of England. But they just separated just because of the revolution. Uh, and that happened in other countries. Like in Ireland, they have yep. the Church of Ireland, mm -hmm. which is, once again, based, it, it's, it's their equivalent of our Episcopalians, which is, our equivalent of their Anglicans. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so I'm not sure I understand the distinction um, between Anglicans and Episcopalians. Just if you, if y'all could clarify that for me real quick, because I'm just uh, not sure. There, there's not a lot of it. Uh, there's not like a huge, huge difference because both church services are very much um, liturgical and they have the same system of government that's like a uh, priest or uh, some people call them rectors or abbots. And above them, you have like the bishops and the archbishop and they report to the archbishop of Canterbury. And also my understanding is like a lot of the one of the key differences from my, what I understand is that Anglican churches are more um, so like Episcopal churches, they're all. They, they will ordain anybody, right? They'll ordain homosexuals, they'll ordain women, they'll ordain pretty much anybody. Anglican churches, I know for a fact, uh, most if not all of them ordain women, but it, uh, not all of them ordain uh, homosexuals. Okay. That's, that's also one of the differences. But other than that, there's not like a huge, huge difference other than really just the name um, mm. in it. And, and the fact that um, Anglicans will straight up say, "Yeah, well, no, we're 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 straight up just Protestant, right?" And Episcopalians, that's when they make the whole distinction between the Middle Passage that we're trying to find a middle way between Catholicism and Presbyterianism. So what they end up doing is they take a lot of um, Catholic practices and even uh, liturgy, but the Catholics do the sacraments and the rituals as um they do it as a way to obtain grace right Where, whereas the episcopalians do those rituals and do those uh sacraments as a way of remembering um so it's it's not necessarily something you have to do but we do it in worship or they do it in worship i should say to remember um mm. the same thing with uh, anglicans um and a lot of other uh, denominations like Presbyterians and Lutherans do the same thing. They, they believe that we do these sacraments and rituals to remind us of who God is. Whereas the Roman Catholic churches, no, we do them because we have to. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's so. a different understanding, but it, it, I mean, it really is. Yeah. Same kind of result though. I mean, you know, whatever, whatever the background behind it is. I mean, the, that works. That's good. Okay. Thank you for that, uh, for going mm -hmm. in depth with me on that. Appreciate it. 
<clears throat> um, let's see. What else do we have? Um, it's also their attendance has declined since we're like speeding through this one. Their attendance has been declining as well, more so than it looks like all the other ones. But well, they're... when you're smaller, you get hit harder. Yeah, with the smaller. Numbers. Their numbers are already tiny. Let's see. We've got yeah. um, from 2000 and 2015, uh, it dropped down from 857,000 to 579,000. So whoa. So a loss of almost 300,000. But even then, that's still a, a tiny number, and that's you know it's United States thing. So. Just a a lot. No one's going to the Episcopal Church. Also, and this is like, I gotta be careful how I say this. So, um, if you will notice, their their numbers are very slow. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, very low. Mm-hmm. But they tend to have a lot of ministries and schools, and they tend to have like a lot of outreach because since its beginning and even to this day. The Episcopal Church has always been kind of very affluent as far as money goes, because, I mean, you have to have money to, like, start your own church back in the revolution. Um, And even to this day, I've only met in my whole entire life one Episcopalian person, right? And I've been living in the South most of my life. I've only met one Episcopalian person. And my understanding is that, like, they, they do tend to be more affluent, which is why they can afford like schools and different outreach programs and organizations. Mm -hmm. I think there's one up there in Chattanooga or up in Tennessee, isn't there? Isn't there like Like, St. Nicholas up there? It's got the the logo of the Episcopal church. I mean, here in Chattanooga, there's like three that mm -hmm. I can think off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, we could say they, um, since they held to the Nicene Creed, we explained that in a former episode. Go check that out in the Protestant Reformation, um, so we don't have to double over it again. Um, yeah. They have the common, the Book of Common Prayer, which uh, that was a thing in England. It was created in England 350 years is- ago. So they just call it instructions for public worship rather than it being like a. A thing you have to hold by then they are like the uh catholic church the holy eucharist is a central act of worship in the episcopal church so they do take the eucharist um but it's they not like not hold. it's not like the same reverence as um well they don't hold to transubstantiation yeah like no Catholics. you don't have to, uh, it doesn't look like you do it all the time um but then they not even that you know, but like they don't believe that it's the literal body and blood of no, Christ, like the Catholics it's do. It's just a symbol in remembrance of Christ, rather than it being the blood and body of Christ. And then baptism is also a, one of the sacraments of the Episcopal Church. Um, they do infant baptism. That I don't know. It doesn't look, look that up. Doesn't look like it. Which we could talk about baby baptism. And a different episode and how it's. Okay. <laughs> how it's I want to say they do. I want to say they do. Just, but I could be wrong. Dun, 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 dun. Something that I find incredibly fascinating as we've um, gone over, um, as as I, I'm sorry, I, I'm not trying to cut in. By the way, I just, yeah, uh, no. I just, I was thinking this, about something. Yeah, this is the last thing here. I can think of before we have to go on to the next one. Go for it, because it'll uh, it'll be a good transition, I think. No, I I can't even see anything. Um, yeah, they are. Yes, they sponsors or godparents speak on behalf of candidates for baptism who are infants or younger. So yes, so it's like children. Are they pedo baptized? They what? Uh, pedo baptism is what it's called. Oh, that's on its. Yeah. Yeah. Um, child baptism. Yes, it looks like it. Um, and you got to be sponsored by someone who already is baptized. So is that, is that literally what they call it? Yeah. So the word. So, okay. So the word pedo. It means uh, child, doesn't it? Well, of course. Yeah. It's it's, it's become sad. synonymous with something else in this day yeah, and so, age that so we're recording this. Yeah. That's, so that's how you get the word pedophile from. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. The word. Pedo actually means um, 
feet. So oh. in Greek, it's, well, in Greek, to say child, you're literally saying little feet. That's how you, that's uh, how they translate to child. Shut up. I've always wondered about that's that. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Podiatrist. Yeah. So the word pedo uh, comes from the Greek. I forgot how to say children in Greek, but it's little feet. And um, phio comes from the word phileos, which means uh, love. So yeah. a pedo phio means lover of children is really what it means. I it's, love yeah. this guy. I'm a Benny file. <laughs> Dude, this, every time I get on a podcast with this brother, like I learned something awesome. I did I not like, know that. Thank you for letting me know. That's dope. I, I didn't little feet. Holy crap. Who would have thought? Oh my I'll gosh. teach you the uh, yeah. etymology of the word pornography, but that's a different topic. We'll get to it. We'll yeah. get to it. That'd be cool. That'd that be, I mean, do you, do you know Latin? I, I understand some Latin because my first language is Spanish. So I can read some Latin. I can read some Italian uh, and understand it a little bit. And Portuguese, mm. I can uh, pick up a lot of it, actually. That is really cool, man. I I suck at languages. That's really neat. Thank you. Thank you for kind of clarifying that. So, okay. So back uh, on subject, uh, they do so they do child baptisms. That's what I'm getting from this. Yes. But I'm sure if you if you um, get, you know, you accept it later on in life. I'm sure you could get baptized as an adult. Uh, that's, that's that's how a lot things. of the people. That's what a lot of denominations do. Yeah. So in in Protestantism, you have um, the big pedo versus credo debate, pedo baptism versus credo baptism. So pedo baptism means children uh, baptism. Credo means believers baptism. Um, credo is Latin for believe, which is where we get the word creed. Um, so that's, that's the big thing in, in Protestant circles. That's what the divides a lot of the times, uh, because like, Episcopalians, Lutherans, Presbyterians, they all do pedo baptism, but like, uh, Baptist, Methodist, and a lot of other denominations there, they believe that only believers should be baptized. So, um, fun little tidbit. Yeah. Mm. You know, I've never been baptized. Oh. I grew up in a religious household and never, never got around to it. I know the the yeah. Catholics do a thing where you baptize as a bad as a baby, but then you have to confirm it when you're like ten years old or whatever. You got to go through That's confirmation, yeah, which is a big deal. Yeah, um, it is. Catholic tradition. Mm. You got to go to school That's for a, it. That's a wow, really. Yeah. It's no, like it's a, a big yeah deal. They make sure you really want to stay in the faith, so. You well, yeah, word up, word up yeah. to my Catholic friends who have been uh confirmed. Awesome, uh, I gotta, I, I actually have a really good friend who's a Catholic. I'll have to ask her if she's uh if she's done that. So, the thing that actually I was gonna bring up that I, I find very, very interesting about um, at, moving on from Episcopalians, absolutely. Um, word up to all our Episcopalian friends, you're awesome. Um, so the thing is is I find it very interesting how, uh, as we study these religions and their beliefs, we're finding that what one religion takes as sacred, another religion might uh, either dismiss or it might acknowledge mm -hmm. but not mm -hmm. think of as sacred, or it might have a completely different interpretation of it. And a lot of it's the same stuff, right? So uh, the easiest and best example is going to be Jesus and his status as uh, Messiah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, a few different religions and religious beliefs obviously do not believe that Jesus was a Messiah, but almost, of course, the Abrahamic religions, almost across the board, they at least believe that he was a prophet and that he was an important historical figure. Mm -hmm. But um, I find that interesting. So, like, as we talk about Catholicism, like, you know, um, you have the, uh, oh, my Lord, that's slipping in my head, when, the wafer, the communion. You have communion. Eucharist. Yeah. Yeah. Eucharist and then communion. so you Eucharist. Okay. So you have that. But then in another sect is something that they do for different reasons mm -hmm. or they have a different interpretation of it. Or and I find it very interesting just like how these kind of common threads have like split to like make their own kind of, um, you know, weave their own fabric. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I find it. I was just reflecting on it while you guys were talking about that. It's like, mm -hmm. it's just so cool how different they are. And um, so 
speaking of something that maybe a lot of people consider different and something that a lot of people um, maybe don't know as much about as they would about Catholicism or something like that, um, I think it's about time that we talk about Jehovah's Witnesses, okay. my friends. So when I pulled up, it's good. My yeah. Little notebook. Yeah, I got, I got, got my, I, I use an iPad, so I got my iPad mm-hmm. all pulled up. I'm ready. I'm to go. old school. And um, I'm in between. I got it pulled up, and I have a little notebook. Look at that. So before we get into like too much, too deep into Jehovah's Witnesses, I, I do want to say that I'm looking at um kind of a just a overall description of them. And I will say there's one thing I really, really like about them, hmm. um, about the ideas, and that is that um, if you're going to be a semi like a kind of a Christian denomination, one thing that's central, in my opinion, in Christianity is actually, whether I agree with it or not as a person, the complete and utter rejection of paganism and uh, polytheism. And so one of the interesting things that I'm seeing about Jehovah's Witnesses is that um, we'll get deeper into it and kind of what they reject and, you know, um, kind of the uh, interesting features of that religious belief. But I, what I didn't know before is that they reject it because it's tied back to paganism. And so they actually utterly reject paganism, which um, most other denominations actually incorporated it because, um, especially Catholicism, because when, you know, they were in their uh absorbing people and they're like basically like hey you need to convert to to christianity they uh adopted some of the pagan like markers during the year in order to make the transition easier on people and uh so i find it very 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 interesting that that is kind of where jehovah's witnesses stand um so uh you guys want to get into the history of them where they started how they started Uh, so it's very interesting because jehovah's uh the jehovah Spoiler alert, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, and the uh, Seventh-day Adventists all started in the same region and in the same uh, time frame Mm. as a lot of other movements. So, like, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Seventh-day Adventists, um, Disciples of Christ started at at around the same time period in that. uh, In New York, I believe it's, like, central New York, maybe Mm. upstate New York. Um, Mm -hmm. The... the, um, uh church of christ i believe all started in that sense so there's like a lot of different um christian sects and groups that started at that same area in that same period of time which is the, the 1800s uh, right like 1820s ish yeah 18 1820 yeah. so i just think that's very 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 interesting um mm-hmm. and jehovah's witnesses was started by this guy named um charles russell and he predicted that Armageddon or the end of the world was going to happen. I believe it was like he, he just started make, making a bunch of predictions of when the world was going to end. Um, and obviously they kept being wrong. So they kept, he kept pushing the date and pushing the date and pushing mm-hmm. the date. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the dates was 1914, which is when World War One started. Obviously, it didn't happen. I mean, World War One happened, but Jesus didn't come back. Um, and he just they just kept pushing the date. Uh, eventually, he died. Mm. obviously because he would be like what 200 300 years old now um yeah. and and um that they're, they're still going strong uh and, and if i can can i name some of the like the theological differences I yeah I, 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 have, much? I have all of their stuff pulled up but you can if you want to i have like what they act what they believe so if you want to talk about the differences i can talk about what they believe specifically yeah. so i'm not going to be hypercritical but like a lot of people will not consider would not consider Jehovah's Witnesses Christians because of the fact that they don't adhere to the Nicene Creed. Mm-hmm. Um so they are like like Devin was saying they're not Trinitarian at all. No, they, they believe reject it's, the concept of the yeah. Trinity, which in Orthodox Christianity that is like a tenet. Like you that is almost like the tenet. That's like and number you, one, pretty most, much. Yeah, yeah. All honestly, so like you have to be Trinitarian uh, to be considered. Honestly, like some people would would say if you're not Trinitarian, you're not really a Christian because such a core belief in 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 Christianity, like in Catholicism and Protestantism and Eastern uh, mm-hmm. Orthodox churches. Mm-hmm. But here we have the Jehovah's Witnesses who completely reject that comes before the Trinity. 
they also believe in uh, a, um, what I call exclusivity of quote unquote denomination, which means that um, you have to be Jehovah's Witness in order to um, achieve the end goal. Yeah. Whereas, whereas me, a Presbyterian, I believe that when I get to heaven or when I get to the kingdom of God, I'm going to see Episcopalians, I'm going to see Baptists, I'm going to see Methodists, I'm going to see other Presbyterians, I'm going to see, you know, really? whereas they're, yeah. So I, I believe that, uh, and most people will believe that, like when, when we get to heaven, we're going to be surprised by who's there and who's not there. So I think that I will share the kingdom with my Catholic brethren or my Eastern Orthodox brethren, uh, my Methodist brethren, my Presbyterian brethren, my Baptist brethren, my Pentecostal, even though there's like people who, who share these idiosyncratic doctrines that I do not agree with. I believe that if, you know, as long as they all, we all share the common core doctrines that Jesus Christ, God himself died for our sins and only through him can we achieve uh community with God. I believe I'll see them in heaven. Okay. So the um, natural, that's, that's really great. I actually, that's something that I did not know was a, was a, was a, was a mainstream type thing. Mm -hmm. Um, um, but that, that does, uh, ask the obvious question and that is I don't know if I want to ask it actually uh, on this podcast um, but so you're saying basically the people who who accept Jesus Christ so there's I mean there's the other two Abrahamic religions don't accept Jesus Christ as right and so and but you know what's interesting about all religions and and all religions, period, is that they would say the same thing about me. Mm. Um, most religions, actually, all religions are mutually exclusive of one another. I know, so, but, I, the, but the, I, ah, my, I, Benny, we got so much to talk about. You got, you got such an interesting mentality, man. I just, love, we just, got, we got to stay on subject. But, dude, oh my god, you're interesting, Benny. You're interesting. Okay. Um, okay, cool. So, um, please, please continue. Oh, so they, like I said, they reject the Trinity, mm -hmm. which a lot of people would say that by you rejecting the Trinity, by you rejecting the fact that Jesus is God, you automatically, you know, disqualify yourself as a Christian. I'm not going to take a position on that, but I'm just saying like, they're, they're, that's the school of thought. I mean, a lot of interesting things. It's pretty reasonable if you're Christian, you know, yeah. it's pretty reasonable. A lot of more like interesting things, like they don't do blood transfusions. Nope. No, absolutely not. I know a I know a Jehovah's Witness. He has a little card in his wallet that says, "If I'm in a car accident, do not give away my blood or don't put any in me because blood is sacred to them." Yeah. And doesn't that doesn't that amount to suicide though? Like I if mean, you're in a situation where you desperately need it, doesn't yeah. that amount to suicide? Yeah, I would I would absolutely be like, "Pump some blood into me <laughs> right now. I do not want to die." Yeah. Do not. Well, it's not my blood. time. It is not my time. <laughs> There's been cases, recorded cases, where uh, a Jehovah Witness couple had a baby, and that baby needed a blood transfusion. Oh my gosh! To no. live. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry right now. Wait, listen, listen, listen. Needed a blood transfusion to live. The parents, um, obviously, rejected the medical service, but the the at that point, what ended up happening is. The hospital um, got the law involved. Oh, like <laughs> child endangerment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I don't think that the law took the baby and put it in child services. I don't think that's what happened. Uh, I think what ended up happening is like they they said we we're not gonna sit here and watch this baby die when it's preventable because that's against the Hippocratic uh, oath. So yeah. that that. There's been absolutely, cases of that. Absolutely. Um, and they don't they don't celebrate non Christian holidays um, or birthdays. They don't celebrate Christmas. Um, I think they only celebrate Easter and, and Christian yeah. holidays. No, they um, don't. They, don't, don't they, I, do, they do not observe Christmas, Easter, birthdays, and the reason is because of what I kind of alluded to in the beginning is that stuff is all seen as having pagan origins uh, and they completely reject paganism. From what I was told by my Jehovah Witness friend, he actually told me that they don't celebrate life, so they don't celebrate birth, so they don't celebrate 
Easter or they don't celebrate any of like birthdays because they they uh, celebrate death because death is the end goal for a human to get into heaven. So he told me that um, they don't celebrate it. And you are right. Yes, it's half because the pagans. Um, he was telling me back in the day the the pope would collect all these holidays or the Christians would gather up all these holidays from other people, bring them into Christianity but also because they celebrate death rather than life. So it's like half paganism and half we don't celebrate life. Yeah, and it's, another it's odd stance to that they – this is something that's kind of interesting. It's like this is such a like nuanced stance that they will like they will die on this hill because I've talked – to a lot of Rishobah's witnesses about it, and th- they will defend this. Like it, to them, it's such a for whatever reason. To them, it's such a crucial detail. Uh, so they believe that Jesus did not die on a cross. He died on a piece of wood on a stake. Hmm. They will they will fight you for that. Like they will die on that hill. Yeah, I mean the difference. I mean to be honest, like. The, the weird thing about the the interesting thing about the cross is that it's so incredibly, incredibly important to history and to uh, the symbology of our history. But uh, getting getting uh, just being respectful to that fact, the difference between the Jehovah's Witnesses interpretation and um, and the normal mainstream interpretation is one, two by four. You know what I mean? Yeah. So but also within religious and historical context, a lot of people believe because cross in like Japanese and older languages is an X shape that we consider. So a lot of people think that the crosses were actually probably an X shape rather than a, the T shape, the lowercase T shape like, that we know like as Saint, of today. Like St. Andrew's cross, yeah. Yep. So a lot of people believe that it's an X shape rather than the regular cross that we have. So that one's up for historical debate, apparently. Yeah. I mean, there's well, like there's, entire history. Like, if you watch the History Channel, there's entire episodes yeah. dedicated to just the cross. But yeah. there's, they did an experiment too, where they did like crucifying somebody, and uh, I think that I saw was that. Actually, I saw that. Did you see it? It's very fascinating. It's been a couple years. If you guys, if you guys listening have not seen the study that they did, like basically on crucifixion, basically what they determined is that um, that uh, the human body can't support its own weight when. Um, it happens through the hands it has to happen through the wrist yeah and it goes Absolutely. really in depth into how crucifixion like actually what kind of death it is and uh because i think a lot of people perceive it as kind of like a i don't know how like people perceive that like you die on a cross but it's yeah. suffocation i've always been told it's you. been suffocation because you can't pull your body up enough to breathe mm-hmm. to suck in the air yeah. so but jesus well, also, I believe he got he got penetrated like the the spear they the spear also they speared him in the side after they yeah. stabbed him well, also yeah. keep in mind that uh, they beat the crap out of him. So they, they tore his – the Bible says that uh, he was so beat up that he was unrecognizable. And yeah. that cross, you know, we see very pretty crosses on at churches. Uh, and just no, it's just they, a oh, piece of trash but wood. It, 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 yeah, it was just trash wood. It had, like, Splinters. thorns and crap in it. Yeah. And it was rugged. So imagine pulling up and your back's already all mm-hmm. whipped up. But yeah, that is how it kills you. Uh, you asphyxiate essentially. Yeah, it's so, all. But but um, also to say like since we are we are trying to make it a podcast that is at least uh, Devin and I are trying to be separated uh, historically. Also, more uh, the Bible, yes, but also historically, we have historical evidence of the Cat of Nine Tails being used on everyone. So like you were beaten up before you went on the cross, no matter who you were. So it wasn't just Jesus. It was like yeah. every so, saint and every person who ever went up on a cross. Well, that's another thing, too, is that I've actually seen in my own life, I've seen people who were under the impression that Jesus was the, and I know because there were the thieves next to him. I know. Trust me, guys. We know what we're talking about. I know. But there's people I've talked to who thought that Jesus was the only part, like the cross was essentially invented for Jesus. No. And he was the only person. And of course, that is nowhere near true uh, in any historical contents. Yeah, we have um, uh, iconography that depicts, you know, that we, we have historical evidence that clearly shows that the cross, whether it's the T form or the X form, yep. was a tool that the Romans used for execution. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. 
Because uh, it's one of the most horrible ways you can possibly die. Yeah. It was a terrible Oh, the Romans were the Romans were experts. Experts. They mastered the crafts of killing people. Which sounds really morbid, but they, they it's did. true. They were so really whether really it was good. a whether it was a T shape or an X shape, we don't know. But um we do know that Jesus was indeed crucified um either in a T shape or in a neck shape because of the way the crucifixion kills you. So Absolutely. I don't I don't um and, and that's it's such that's an interesting to, that's, standard that's semantics but of whatever shape um, it was. The 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 thing is though is the one thing that I've never really seen like um uh I've I've never seen kind of properly explained is like if the human like and maybe we can talk about it in another episode, but it, it the human body can't support itself if you're going through the hands because the nails would go through the hands. Mm -hmm. Then then where would the stigma stigmata, you know, would it be on the wrist instead? It has to be. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, I, 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 I just I find it I find that that subject so incredibly interesting. Um especially in the historical context context when you consider the fact that Jesus was indeed crucified and many people were indeed crucified and that that was a mainstream way of killing people back in the day which um it's uh something that um I think that uh people maybe don't think about enough I I think it might be something worth thinking about for our listeners is the fact that when you wear a cross around your neck you are wearing a monument to the torture of an innocent soul Mm. Um, and I don't mean that in an attacking mean way. I just mean it in a conscientious way. Um, I find it just so mind blowingly interesting that that became the iconography of for yeah. Christianity. Well, I, I mean, you have, there's two different iconographies. There's the crucifix for the Catholics, which has Jesus on the cross, but for yes. Protestantism, Protest, Protestants, it's an empty cross. So it's, yeah. it is the symbol for resurrection. It still is. Yeah. Because it was used for torture, but it has, um, since it's empty, it's not crucifix, it's not, you know, worshiping, or not worshiping, but not recognizing the death, it's more the resurrection. I still do understand what you're, what you're saying, though. Uh, and also remember that Jesus in the gospel told his followers, pick up your cross and follow me. Yeah. yeah. So what he, what he was saying was, die to yourself in the most... Uh, humiliating way like die, die to your flesh die to your desires die to your sin and follow me there's a um, jesus jesus had to die for us to have that com uh relationship with god so that's what uh, also the cross symbolizes there's mm -hmm. a there's a weird beauty that and it's not is is there's a sort of beauty to that pick up your cross and follow me i find that actually to be very beautiful okay um because yeah. we all bear our own crosses don't we mm. so that's uh, I find that yeah. I just I don't know I find that cool. Okay, so back to our friends the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. I was gonna sprint Where... back on what they believe. Go for it. All right, I just throw these off real quick. Um, they believe so we discussed that there is only one God with them. They don't believe the Trinity exists. They believe it's just one God. Um, for Jesus, they believe Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Jesus was created by Jehovah as the Archangel Michael before the physical world existed and is a lesser though mighty god little g so they don't believe that jesus they just believe jesus was a guy created by god so jehovah witnesses believe that uh, when jesus was born on earth he was a mere human and not god in human flesh um they believe that um jehovah jehovah witness believe that jesus was resurrected spiritually from the dead but not physically so there was no um the the, the grave was not empty according to jehovah witness they also believe that the second coming was inevitable spiritual event that occurred in the year 1914, like Benny was saying. Um, they believe that um, the Holy Spirit is an impersonal force of God and is not a distinct person. So they don't believe in the Holy Spirit pretty much. They just believe it's a part of God that's there. Um Jehovah Witness believe that salvation requires faith in Christ associated with God's organization, which is theirs, and obedience to its rules. And like uh, we were saying earlier, they believe that there are two classes of people. Jehovah Witness believe there are two people of God. The anointed class, the 144,000 in Revelation, um, will live in heaven and rule with Christ. And the other sheep is what they call it. All other believers will live forever on a paradise on earth. Uh, they don't believe that there is an immaterial soul. 
the soul is a life force of a person and um at death the the life force leaves the body um and they don't believe in a hell they just believe a uh, jehovah witness believe that hell is not a place of eternal suffering but is rather a common grave of humankind the wicked are annihilated snuffed out of consciousness existence Man. forever so that's like their basic in a in a yeah, hurry essentially yeah yeah Pretty much. I mean, that's a significant divergent from mainstream religious thought. Especially, um, yeah, they maybe, also, maybe believe, not, yeah. Maybe not the Jesus part, because the Jesus part, I mean, is uh, has a little bit in common with like Judaism and Islam, but a lot of that is, it sounds, sounds really actually really interesting in the context of all the other kind of specs that we've talked about so yeah. far. That's really cool stuff. So um, with, uh, with Jehovah's Witnesses, we still haven't gotten to the big... Uh, big elephant in the room and that is the door knocking oh i don't even know about the door knock i didn't even look that up i probably should have uh, so i mean they're just the jehovah's witnesses do a very also they do a very good job well i don't know if i should say very good job but they focus a lot on 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 their community so once you get in their eyes once you get baptized the jehovah's witnesses you're locked in for life right mm. that's it and if you leave the community is like you getting shunned mm. like your loved ones are someone's like disown me your loved ones disown you like so it, it's a it's a big deal to them and the door knocking they they feel that it's uh like how should i say it like part of part of salvation like it's almost like you have to do it in order for you to be safe or for you to to have um community with god which is also which is very much against um mainstream christianity i would say mm. so um that is i actually i actually um decided that uh because i wanted to bring up the fact that um prince um, one of the most, like one of my most respected musicians in my life, uh, a, a gentleman that I just thought was wonderful in every way and still do. Uh, he was a Jehovah's witness. And, uh, um, we talked about this offline last week. Yeah. Um, we talked about this offline, but, uh, what I didn't know is that he, um, was a full blown, um, practicing Jehovah's witness. So oh, yeah, he, he was legit. He knocked on people's doors and stuff like he did the he did the whole thing. Oh my god! And so I got curious about who else in yeah. the celebrity realm. I'm is looking Jehovah's that up right now. That's really interesting. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And so like uh, I I found a list on Ranker. Oh, that's um, the one I'm on right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Serena Williams, for example, was uh is a Jehovah's Witness. Michelle Rodriguez was raised Jehovah's Witness. Um, Donald Glover was raised it, but he identifies atheist today. So. If he was raised Jehovah's Witnesses, but later on identifies as an atheist, does that mean like the like the the Jehovah's Witness like church like excommunicated or shunned or what whatever him like uh, I mean I guess I guess if you don't it's I don't know when it comes to kids it's a little bit difficult because like there's an entire conversation to be had about whether kids should identify as any religion ever hmm. or as an atheist because I don't I don't think kids should identify either way because they're kids but you know um i don't know there's an interesting conversation i wonder what the jehovah's witness official stance on donald Glover is if he mm. if he's an atheist i I'd know be, i'd be i'd be curious i know for a lot of protestants you don't like lose your salvation i mean i know some do believe that you can lose it if you don't practice often enough but a lot of protestants or at least the ones that i was raised around uh do believe the the saying of once saved always saved you can't really lose your salvation unless you like the only way i was told you can is if you deny the holy spirit because that's the one that dwells within you so if you deny the holy spirit then that's the big no-no right there so i don't know if they also believe that once jehovah witness always jehovah witness even if you leave or i don't know about any of that a common argument in protestant circles that like you have that's the whole like Calvinism, Arminianism debate. Yeah. But we're not gonna get into that. So a, a lot of um, um, what you might call it, denominations, will say that you no, know, you straight up can walk away from their faith and then lose their salvation. But other 
um, denominations such as like Presbyterian. Well, depends on which Presbyterians, but like a lot of Calvinists would say, no, you cannot lose your salvation. As Baptist as well. Uh, all Baptists also buy into that. Uh, and, and the question is, well, what about the people who like say they accepted Jesus, but then like walked away from the faith? Mm. The argument and the answer to that is you were never saved to begin with. Because if God truly comes into your life, you can't not be the same. I, I mean, I, and I'm and not and I'm a big believer in that. So I, I don't know what the Jehovah's Witnesses would. Uh, I don't know what their stance on Donna Glover would be. I think that's something that's that'd be int- I'd be interested to find out. Hmm. I'll do more research on it. And I'll get back with you guys next time, and we'll uh, we'll kind of go deeper. Uh, it might be cool just to kind of go into some of those repercussions and stuff, some of the less direct stuff. Mm-hmm. Selena was a Jehovah's Witness. Did not know that. Uh, rest in peace, Selena. She was awesome. It, um, so, yeah, there's a lot. And actually, the interesting thing about this list is a lot of them, a lot of these celebrities were raised Jehovah's Witnesses. It's a very small sect. There's not a lot of them, but, like, these guys, were they were raised that way, and they either stayed with it, um, a few converted after, like Prince converted after his mom died. Ja Rule, interestingly, uh, he, his mom was disfellowshipped. I see that on this list. I don't know why. And he, uh, he left after that, I guess, in solidarity with his mom, which is mm. pretty dope. Um, you know, stay, sticking with your mom. That's good. Good for you, Ja Rule. Okay. So that's cool. That's celebrities that are Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm sure there's more out there. I mean, there's a list on Google of 25 25- celebrities that are jehovah's witnesses like the wayne brothers were on there and stuff but um we just don't have time for that because we gotta get into it we gotta get into it who's next we got the episcopal episcopalians we got the jehovah's witnesses um we uh i know we're gonna do seventh day adventist we had church of jesus christ of latter-day saints or the mormons to be and then yep did you the Mormons. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go Mormons, and then we'll get into Seventh Day Adventists. Okay, if you guys want to. I have what they believe pulled up right now. Uh, I used my uh, ProQuest. I so I have a scholarly article here, uh, full text. Um, nice. Let's see what they actually believe. Is that this is way off of? Well, not. It's kind of way off. So they are the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, they believe in the Trinity, but it's different from mainline Christianity as well with Jehovah Witness. They believe that each one is completely separate and distinct from each other. So they don't believe that God is equal to Jesus, or they don't believe that God is Jesus and Jesus is the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is God. They believe that God is God, Jesus is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit, and that's it. But they agree with everything that they say. Um, that's called so, partialism, by the way. Yeah, they think there's three gods with three separate personalities. Um, Can I just add something real quick? Um, yeah. So that that's called partialism, and in Orthodox Christianity, that's considered super heretical. Yeah, that's a no. Because uh, it's, that's a no, it's no. polytheism, essentially. And, yeah, that right? one, well, 100, I think so. If you're saying it's n- don't hold a polytheistic view, uh, they call it a uh, social trinitarianism, which is a fancy theological term, basically meaning that God the Father plus God the Holy Spirit plus God the Son equal God or the Godhead, which is partialism, and in Orthodox Christianity, that's a huge, huge. But this like, one's heresy. this one's different. They believe in three gods, pretty much. Yeah. It says that. There's three different gods, God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy spirit. They don't, they are, they, you know, they think for themselves, they breathe for themselves. They just kind of agree on everything there. It's not, I think it's a little bit different than partialism. I would say, I think this one is, this one is pretty much polytheism. I would say in my, in view that I see because they also justify being heretical, um, in the eyes of the church. Um, They also believe so. We uh, um, Protestants believe that Jesus has a corporeal body with bones and flesh, but um, they believe that God the Father is a spirit you cannot see. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. But the Mormon or the Latter Day Saints believe that both God and Jesus have bodies of skin and bones, 
Um, they believe pretty much God is a man. And the biggest thing that they really believe in is that, and this is way off of, way out of Christianity, um, they believe that you will become as God when you go higher up. There is... That, oh, go ahead. I was going to say that that's called deification. Yes. Well, I mean, they believe you become pretty much God. There is a planet that they believe is really close to God. It's kind of off, but yeah. I thought deification was the idea that after you die, you're... Um, correct me if I'm wrong, of course, as always. But I thought deification was the idea that after you died, you become um, purified uh, in order to be God-like. But not not that you become as God, that you essentially become a part of that. Uh, no, deification deification means that you can become god so i'm kind of hazy as far as the details i don't know exactly like um i don't know if the mormons believe that you can become a god and like to the same level as god or something close to god um, uh extremely close to god they believe in a star or planet described in the book of abraham called kolob it's a sacred text of the latter-day saint movement the um the Book of Abraham traditionally is held as Latter-day Saints as um, denominations having been translated from an Egyptian Peripus scroll by Joseph Smith, the man himself. Um, and according to his work, Kolob is a heavenly body nearest to the throne of God. While the Book of Abraham refers to Kolob as a star, it also refers to planets as stars. And therefore, Latter-day Saint uh, commentators consider Kolob to be a planet. Um... So, yes, they believe that you kind of lord over this star, this planet. Uh, essentially, it's like you become a god, more yeah. or less. And they believe that because God was a mortal man that achieved that status of God, that we too can do that. That's what, which, once again, it's extremely heretical in the eyes of the church yeah another thing that they which is another huge no-no that would probably disqualify them and as christians in some people's eyes is they don't believe in biblical inerrancy so most you know most uh christians would say uh that would believe in, in biblical inerrancy which means that the bible is not fallible as far as like the message that it's trying to portray Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So the Bible is uh, an absolute, uh, it's an absolute truth, and it's not fallible. Yeah. As far uh, as Mormon, as far as the message, I think I think because I think if we tried to say that a majority of people believe that uh, even people of any religion believe that the Bible is literal word for word truth of history and of events that happened. I think most of us would disagree with that um, very, very, very hard. So, I mean, as far as, like, mm -hmm. that's getting more into, like, the actual, like, art of translation. And obviously, the translation in English, it's not going to read the same as translation in, in Greek. Yeah, absolutely. In Greek, in Aramaic, and but infallibility of the Bible is something that I that I, I might be wrong. Um, I It's always possible. But um, I was under the impression that infallibility of the Bible was something that only um, a few sex practice that not is not a mainstream idea um because the bible is usually seen as um as a as basically a giant parable and taken in broad strokes um for its lessons and for its value to you know people well, but I, I could be wrong about that most most orthodox christians believe uh in in infallibility and in inerrancy um but inerrancy is in my opinion uh, the big one because y you you believe that um, the overall message of the Bible um, it's true and it's absolute, whereas the Mormons believe that it's not because they hold Joseph Smith's writings yes to the same level as the Bible, mm. uh, and they believe that the Bible that we have is like corrupt. So, like, uh, the Book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Price, uh, and I forgot the other collection of writings that he wrote, they put those on the same pedestal 
as the Bible itself, which once mm-hmm. again in Orthodox Christianity is like a huge no no. Yeah. They um let's see. They they believe that the post apostolic Christian church no longer received revelation from Jesus nor was recognized him as authoritative. So they they also believe like one of what I was told by my Mormon friends, I have a lot of I have a lot of these people who are I also have a Seventh day Adventist friend. I the only one I don't have is Episcopal friend. But um my Mormon friends told me that they believe that after the resurrection that happened in Jerusalem, he ascended into up and came back down in the United States of America. That's and um he witnessed to the Native Americans. And then that's where we get all of the Joseph Smith stuff where he had uh, he was behind a sheet uh, with an angel there and he, writing on the gold tablets. Which that whole story is. I mean, we can do a whole episode on that story um, of Joseph Smith. But yeah, basically, and and they believe that uh, there's a lost tribe of uh, Israel that ended up in the New World and Jesus came and yeah. uh, essentially preached to them. And also, they do not accept non-Mormon baptism. Yeah. So that's something they're very, very big on. It's like if you join the Mormon church and say, well, I used to be Presbyterian or I used to be Baptist. Nope. You were never baptized to begin with. Like only the Mormon Baptist, uh, they accept. Yeah. And they Uh, believe that Jesus was created, which once again, huge no, no. Yeah. They believe Jesus is a demigod pretty much. Yeah. Um, Uh, they think he's a transcended human. Is what I was told. I mean, that's just that's pretty much what they what they believe, and uh, mm. the, the the Mormon yeah. like they're very big on mission. So, like, if you ever well, talk to a well for boys, I talked to a mission yeah. uh, a a girl who is Mormon, and she said she is not required to go on a mission. They say she is supposed to support the male, her male friends in their missions and she can go on one if she is inclined to do so but a, a male mormon has to go on one when they turn 18 yeah um, well and i had a friend who was dis- dishonorably discharged no honorably discharged from his mission he didn't have to go through the whole thing my understanding of it is that no one actually has to do it technically but you i mean once again like most people who are mormon grew up in the Mormon church. And so as yeah. they grew up, this has been drilled into them. And yeah, yeah. societal like said, pressure. Absolutely. Like you were, don't, you yeah. don't have to go on a mission, but do just go on the mission, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, uh, one more thing that, that my friends told me about, and I just remembered about now was they have three heavens. Uh, you have the celestial kingdom, te- terrestrial kingdom and the telestrial kingdom. Uh, they don't. I don't believe they believe in hell, is what he told me, and I'm seeing here, uh, like everyone from someone who murders people, uh, and steals all the time. You know, awful people go to the first heaven. I don't believe they believe in hell. There's the lowest of the three kingdoms. Inhabitants, according to the Book of Doctrine and Covenants, those who inhabit the celestial kingdom, which is the first one. Those who received not the gospel of Christ nor the testimony of Jesus. So it will also include liars and sorcerers and adulterers and whoremongers and whosoever loves and makes a lie. So basically, everyone gets into heaven, but this is a different one. And they believe that these individuals will remain in a spirit prison for a thousand years during the millennial reign of Christ. And after the thousand years, the individuals will be resurrected and receive immortal physical body into the celestial kingdom. So anyone who's anyone gets to be into heaven when it comes to Latter-day Saints. There's just some people that are like cooler than you. And so they get the cooler heaven. Like, yeah. The the cooler heaven gets the latest iPhone first. That's... And then you have to wait for it to go on yeah. uh you have to wait for it to go on like a uh, straight talk mm-hmm. wireless or something. Yeah, oh that's the terrestrial <laughs> the terrestrial kingdom. That is, uh, those who inhabit the terrestrial kingdom include those who lived respectably, but were blinded by 
craftiness of men and thus rejected the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ has been presented to them during their mortal lives. Uh, it also includes persons who rejected the testimony of Jesus Christ in the flesh, but afterwards received it in the spirit world. Those who are not uh, val- valiant in the testimony of Jesus Christ after having received it. So if you became Mormon, but didn't do anything about it, you go to the second heaven. And I'm sure Protestants would be somewhere in there in the terrestrial kingdom, not the telestial kingdom. That's where the Protestants and Catholics would go and probably the uh, Islam and probably Judaism would probably be thrown in the terrestrial kingdom. If I was to guess. Yeah, it sounds it sounds about right. Yeah, they receive the presence of the Son, but not the fullness of the Father. So they they hang out with Jesus, but not God. And then, obviously, the celestial kingdom is for those residents who have become, who have been righteous, accepted the teachings of Jesus Christ, and made uh, and lived up to all the required ordinances and covenants. Individuals may accept and receive the ordinance and covenants during their mortal lives. For those who did not have the opportunity while living, they have the opportunity in the post-mortal spirit world uh, where they can accept ordinances performed on the behalf of the LDS church members in their temples. So, yeah. Oh, let's, let's see. All children who die before the age of eight automatically inherit the celestial kingdom without the reception of ordinances. Okay. That's nice. That's That's real nice. A lot of Protestants believe that too, because there's the age of accountability. So if you are like six, you don't know exactly what you're doing yet. So if you happen to unfortunately pass away before you know, you can make up your own mind and your decisions, you just go straight back to heaven. There's like, it's, it's like guaranteed because they had no chance to accept Christ and God. So they just, wisp right on up there i'm glad i'm glad protestant uh protestantism has kind of covered this because i know what happens to babies um and what happens to children when they die has long long been a yeah. very serious source of debate in, yeah. uh, in religious circles mm-hmm. yeah. so, so the the age of accountability that nick brings up it's 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 it is a source of debate because um it's not a biblical concept as in like it's not in the bible um so it is something that like people have been debating and and you know um like is that a thing is another thing so it it's it's always interesting to, when people bring that up like i never know what to think about it yeah but I, yeah yeah so well i'll just say i'll just say for my part um that uh my uh when i was growing up my cousin was my best friend and he passed away very 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 young and uh i like to think that he is in heaven so that's just me though absolutely um anyway good kid i miss him uh so uh yeah i don't even know why that's a debate personally but okay uh that's cool i uh so yeah now uh i would like to kind of go into some of the so what we've talked about so far is a very interesting um a cool a cool history, but we kind of kind of skirted around some of the some of the things that make our, our Mormon friends a little bit different from other religions besides like the hardcore, you know, mainline religion stuff like the Celestial Kingdom and stuff. Um, like, for example, uh, polyamory. Yeah, is something that was a thing for a while. Um, this yeah. is and it's not it's not it's not I a trap. I think they I think they just brought it back as well. I think Utah just brought it back. What? I think think let me check let me fact check myself oh i know for a fact that like it, it joseph smith was an interesting figure and he preached against it but practiced it really yes he preached against it but practiced it um but the church took a official position i believe in 1904 um uh, outlawing it as well as um whites only priesthood so for for a long time they believe that only white people could be priest or ordained um later on i don't know if that was necessarily 1904 later on in this 20th century but um they they came to the conclusion that no black people could also be um so so 
and that's the thing about Mormonism. Like, if you, as you study the history of it, it's very liquid in a way. Like, they're, they, they have changed. throughout the twentieth century specifically, they changed like a lot of of just rules and and interpretations. And it, it was for a long time, it was just like constantly something was changing in the Mormon Church as far as saying mm-hmm. like. You know, which is yeah. They said a lot oh, of people. You, you, they said you have to have polygamy. You have to have more than one wife. And then they're like, no, 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 that's not required anymore. Yeah, same thing with because like, it was like a social status thing too. Like how many wives yeah. you had. So. I I do have an interesting fact. Uh, this was this year. Um, this article was written on uh, February second, twenty twenty. This is on NPR dot org. Um, the author is Vanessa Romo. We have Utah bill decriminalizing polygamy clears first hurdle, moves to state Senate. So wow. now polygamy is no longer uh, a felony. They're going to vote on it. But yeah, the fact that they're even voting on it is. Yeah, I'm sure impressive. they. Oh, it's a Republican senator who sponsored the legislation. Interesting. Uh, I wonder if he's a Mormon. That's estimated 300,000 views. Wow. Also, and this is something that just to tell you like about like the whole polygamy uh, like status. Yeah. uh, Utah is the state in all of the country that receives the most welfare money. Oof. In all of the country. Because um, scho- uh, I don't know scholars you should say, but they they're starting to think that because of that, that because it's so hush hush, that they're they're having kids quote unquote out of wedlock, and then you can get a welfare from that because you're not married. But uh, yeah, it's a big. I'd have to look more into that, but I know for a fact that Utah receives more welfare money than any other state in the mm. country, and I think that might be one of the reasons. So. Mm. Uh, I actually have a, I actually have something in, in my own life that um, kind of colored my perception. Um, and this isn't like, dear listener, this is not to tell you how you should feel about any religion or belief. Um, that's not, that's not what we're going for. You should know that. I hope you know that by now. But I do, I do actually want to point out one thing that I thought was really nasty. Um, and by nasty, I mean mean. Um, what happens is, is uh, one of my dearest friends in the entire world is mixed. He is mixed black and white and uh, he uh, works as a printer like he does printing. So he was printing the Book of Mormon, my dudes, and he found the section regarding black people. And uh, do you know what I said? Do you guys are you guys aware? Because you when you brought up the racist thing earlier, like they wouldn't have black people um, doing their official thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it's I don't know what it says. Hmm. It says it says that there was a war between heaven and hell. I'm gonna make it short. They said there was a war between heaven and hell, and uh, the uh, angels or whatever that refused to participate, they stayed in the middle, were basically burnt alive by God, and that's how black people were invented, and that they are basically eternally damned. Oh, oh my, that. oh my. That's this isn't that also, just it? Isn't that just mind blowing? Yeah. In today's modern age, like maybe back in the day when that came out. You know, such a big deal, but like uh, it should have been. But but today, that's just like I read it. He took a screenshot from the literal book. <laughs> like, look at this. And I was like, man, how must it feel? How must yeah. it feel to be mixed well, and read that? There's there's also the hematic theory or the hematic curse, I think is what it's called. Um, you should Google it just right quick. Basically, what it is is um, when um, Noah uh cursed his son uh when when noah cursed his son because his son uh made fun of him or or shamed him or whatever um that curse that he put on him uh is how um black people came to be now this is not biblical like this is not what the bible says but i've i've seen it's called the hematic theory and i've seen a lot of it's it's not prevalent anymore obviously but Mm. um Throughout history, I think people have used that foolishness, call it what it is, to justify uh, atrocities. Yeah, the the basic theory between history and like there was this event in the Bible called the Tower of Babel, and that was in the Old Testament, 
um, uh, that was in the Old Testament, and it was uh, an event where these people um, were gathering up stones and laying down these stones to build something called a ziggurat. A ziggurat is like a really small tower, really short by today's standards, but they thought they were getting closer to God. And so what God did was as they were climbing higher and higher and they were communicating with each other, he made them all suddenly speak a different language. So the Tower of Babel, I'm going to pull it up again just to make sure. No, I mean, that's that's the that's the broad strokes of the story. Yeah, absolutely. So the Tower of Babel, everyone is it's in Genesis 11, 1, 9. Um, so it's um, everyone. That's where they all speak different languages, so they can't understand each other. So they just they go away. They go away from all these. They, they go and um, sell in other places. And that's where we get different people. Which is, uh, I mean, as far as exp- as far as religious explanations of the history of humanity and like how we all came to like uh, be in different geographical locations and speak different languages and have different cultures and customs, um, I, that's one of the least offensive ones. Yeah, because I'll be I'll be real with you. I find the Mormon interpretation to be deeply, deeply, deeply offensive. I just pulled that and- one up. Yeah, it says in the Book of Mormon. A man named Jarrett and his family asked God that their language not be confounded at the time of the Tower of Babel because of their prayers. God preserves their language and leads them to the Valley of Nimrod. From there, they travel across the sea to the Americas. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints uh, teaches that the Tower of Babel story is a historical fact, although there are many in our day who consider uh, the accounts of the flood and the entire Babel to be fiction, Latter-day Saints affirm their reality. So, yeah, the Book of Mormon just goes, some guy and his family did not want their language to be involved in that, so they just peaced out and headed to America. I mean, if you ask nicely, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I mean, you know, I, if, I mean, if I was God and people asked nicely, you know, yeah. okay. Ooh, but uh, we have but the Islamic the, tradition as well. What do you mean? Uh, although not mentioned by name in the Quran, uh, or although not mentioned by name, the Quran is a story with similarities to the biblical story of the Tower of Babel. Although set in Egypt of Moses, uh, Pharaoh asks Haman to build him a stone or clay tower so that he can mount up to heaven and control the God of, or and confront the God of Moses. Sorry, not control another story in surah 2 102 mentions the name of babil but or yeah but tells of when two agents horat and murat or harut and marut taught magic to some people in babylon and warned them that magic is a sin and that they're teaching that magic is a test of faith the tale of babil appears to be more uh, appears more fully on writing of Yakut um, and the Lisan al Arab. I'm sorry, I'm probably destroying these for all of my Islam uh, uh, friends. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce Muslim. these. Muslim friends, but without the tower. So mankind were swept together by winds of the plain. They were afterwards called Babil, where they were assigned their separate languages by God. And then it also goes into the. Nimrod as well, the tower built in Babil. God destroys the language of mankind. So yeah, so even in Islamic tradition, we have the Tower of Babel. So that's where um, a lot, uh, that's the tradition of where humans come from or the different colored, uh, different races, different languages, where everything comes from was the Tower of Babel. And I don't know that that account was in the Quran. That's really interesting. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit different, but it's still the same same concept, concept. yeah absolutely uh it's um to me uh i've always found very 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 uh just very uh like i i'm trying to say fascinating and interesting less because i say it a lot but mm. uh truly it's the only word that i can use to describe the the uh like just kind of how a lot of these 
religious ideas and a lot of these beliefs kind of work their way around a lot of the realities of the world. Um, the Tower of Babel story perfectly epitomizes that, like 100% perfectly. Mm. And uh, I don't know. It's cool. It's interesting. Yeah. All right. So um, we're not we're not going to um, – we're not – I don't know. Uh, does any, do you guys have anything else you want to say about uh, Mormonism? Um, obviously, there's a very, very large downside. There's a, a very large debate over the legitimacy of Joseph Smith and the things that he said. Um, uh, I, and I think scholars pretty much, there's not much debate really at all in their case, but, um, I don't know if we want to get into that or if we want to, um, kind of save that for something else or some other time. Mm, we could do its own episode on that one. It's okay. On episode, Cause that's, it's a whole thing. Yeah. Cause it's very yes. controversial. Mm -hmm. The, you know, the whole story behind them. I will say that they do a lot of missionary work, obviously, like we were saying, um, and I do admire their, uh, how do I say, their fervor, their, I don't want to say zealot, they're, they're not zealots, but their fervor and want to share the gospel is something amazing. And I believe that uh, all my Protestant friends out there, if you're listening, you should also go on a mission, maybe, if you want. But, you know, if you, if you really care, like the Mormons do, maybe go on a mission. They, they really do care about spreading the word of jesus according to them so i i do give them props for that i'm a you know that's like a big i'm a big fan of how much they care about it and how much they want to get it out there yeah because something that's something you actually talk about pretty often which is um kind of a talk in the talk and walk in the walk um yeah if you identify with any specific belief system um that's that's cool i i mean me personally like I think that, um, like, if I had to pick an Abrahamic religion that I personally am a huge fan of, um, I would have to pick Judaism. Uh, and the reason is because I really, really like the fact that they just kind of stay to themselves and, mm. you know, they kind of like do their own thing and they got their own community and, you know, they don't, they don't proselytize. So it's interesting to me that, um, something that you really like is actually the proselytization. I, I don't know. I find that cool. Like there's, there's two different They're, ways of looking at it. Neither are wrong, I don't think. But. They, um, from what I've seen and the videos that I've seen, um, they do it a lot more peacefully than a lot of uh, others, I will say, because I have known a lot of missionaries in the South. You know, they go Bible thumping, hellfire, brimstone. If you don't believe this, you're going to hell. But from what I've seen from the Mormons, it's very peaceful. And they go in, and if you accept it, you accept it. If you don't, you don't. They leave. It's fine. So I think it's a great middle road. They keep to themselves in the fact that, you know, they go out on their mission. But if you don't accept it, they're not going to get mad at you like, I like say, a Baptist would. A lot of Baptists, from what I've seen, really like you to believe what the Baptists believe. Um, a lot of old oh, people. Well, a lot of old people, I anyway. can say to a head that every Jehovah's Witness I've ever met and every person I've ever has been a total sweetheart. Yeah. Total nice people. I yeah. Totally nice people. Definitely, I, definitely yeah. not saying anything about them as people. One of my best homies uh, is uh LDS. And uh one yeah. of my other homies uh is uh Jehovah Witness. Yeah, my mom has a good friend that's a Jehovah's Witness. Um mm. that's where I learned about some of their uh, more interesting aspects because my mom had to work around it. Yeah. Um kind of hanging out. They they had a falling out, not over religion, they had a falling out over something else, but um, they, uh, but my mom talked to me about kind of having to work around the whole birthday thing. Yeah. And, and then that's also where my, where my, like a lot of my thoughts regarding, uh, children and what children identify as, as, uh, especially with the story about the, uh, the child with the blood transfusion, but, um, the, uh, just like kind of like when they actually get to identify as something, because like this uh this person who you know no disrespect you know it's your belief or whatever but um they basically their kids couldn't celebrate the birthdays they couldn't celebrate christmas or anything they didn't get to celebrate any of that because the mom was was um was jehovah's witnesses just going back to that real quick and um and i don't know i just i don't know if i feel i don't know if i feel that that's the correct way to handle things personally but I do know that uh, I do know that that's kind of something that I've seen. It's happening in the real world, 
and it's a belief and that's okay. You know, that's, that's their belief. So, um, but doesn't change the fact that she's a total sweetheart, total nice person, love her to death. 100%. If you happen to listen to this, my Jehovah's witness friend, stay beautiful. Okay. So yep. moving on. I think that, uh, I think that unless you guys have any closing thoughts about Mormonism, uh, Nope. I think, I, I, think I think I'm good. Seventh day Adventists. Yep. Oh. I know nothing about Seventh day Adventists. So um, this is going to be educational for me. <laughs> uh, I, Seven. from what I know, I have a, another friend who, <laughs> I got another friend. A lot of my, a lot of my, what I know besides looking up some of it is mostly what they tell me they believe. So, like that's where I got a lot of the Jehovah Witness facts and um, Mormon fact. Or that's yeah. that's the best place to get it though. Like so, because yeah. like you're talking eyes on the ground type yep. situation. So, so yeah, my friend who is Seventh Day Adventist told me it's pretty much regular Christianity, and it's on Christianity dot com. So I mean, they must believe that it is sort mostly mainline Christianity. Um, yeah. I think out of you know. Uh, obviously, uh, oh my goodness, I'm, my train of thought just left. Obviously, uh, um, Episcopalianism is a, a Nicene Creed, yeah. uh, Christianity, it's mm-hmm. a denomination of Protestantism. I think that uh, Latter day Saints are as well because their theology is not different enough to where Latter day Saints or Seventh be, day? Sorry, Seventh day. Um, seventh day, because they 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 believe in the Trinity and they have an Orthodox view in the Trinity. They have an Orthodox view of uh, inerrancy and infallibility. They just have some some more idiosyncratic things um, that that I don't think would disqualify them in a lot of people's eyes as non as Christians. Uh, I have a couple of coworkers that are Seventh Day Adventists, and uh, one of them like we hang out during the summer because we both work during the summer at my job, and mm. he's super cool. Um, the the big differences that I have seen is that they take uh, Saturday. That's their Sabbath, right? Yeah. They take that literally. They still hold to that, which is a um, uh, Jewish tradition. She started off the Jewish tradition, yeah. Right? Yep. But they, they believe that that the Sabbath is on Saturday, and so they, um, they the only thing they do on Saturday, I think, is they go to church uh, to their service. They have and, a they also have a big meal. They do fellowship over a gigantic meal. Yeah. Well, also, oh gosh, you they, can, oh, okay. There is something I don't like though. Uh, for Sabbath, you can't have a wedding on Sabbath or or a funeral, <laughs> but they do allow for emergency health care. <laughs> so you can't if you can't get married, and you better hope you don't die on a Saturday. Also, uh, Seventh Day Adventists are really, really super into like healthy diets and healthy yeah, eating. Yeah, absolutely. They, they adhere to the Old Testament uh, dietary restrictions. Yeah. Whoa, really? And they believe, yeah. yeah, they say, that in the most basic form, they are vegans. If you are like a full-on Seventh-day Adventist, you, they believe that God gave you nuts, grains, and herbs, and that's like, that's all you get. They and don't, at the very, yeah. At the very least, though, like, you can't eat pork. You can't eat uh, shellfish or bottom feeders. Like basically, what the Old Testament dietary rules are, and they also like a lot of them don't drink soda. No, you yeah, they uh, don't. It forbids alcohol and tobacco. Oh, well, tobacco, so, yeah. Yep. A lot of them, um, they they if they do dairy, it's low fat dairy. So they, yeah, like the really hardcore hardcore ones, like Nick was saying, they would just straight up say, yeah, we're just vegans. Like screw it. Yeah. Um, I mean, but. I I just I wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. I did I had no idea. That is I don't know whether to applaud them for their tenacity or to pity them. Because <laughs> I mean, what kind of life I is mean, that? I mean, my seventh day Adventist friend, he doesn't eat red meat. So he'll eat fish and chicken and that's it. So like he'll still eat chimkin and the fish but, that, <laughs> but that's it so he'll eat the chimkins yeah little chimkins. so he's not gonna go out Damn. and eat uh pork and stuff he'll eat some chicken nuggies 
<laughs> yeah, because we, we stopped when we worked together. So we stopped somewhere. Uh, we got Panda Express and you got Shimkin. So, I yeah. just, all I really have to say about this matter as far as food goes is if I'm not allowed to eat mussels at the Chinese buffet, count mm. me out, my dude. Uh, count me out. <laughs> Your boy can't party like that. <laughs> I'm mm, sorry. I like fish too much. Oof. Yeah, yeah fish is amazing. Oh my God. I love seafood. My wife hates seafood. She oh. can't stand it. I'm like, I'm like, what also, are you? <laughs> they are annihilationist. Yes. So they, they, yes, they are. Mm-hmm. Stop. They believe you just oh. gone. They also believe that once you die, you stay dormant until Jesus comes back. Yeah, you. It's a unconscious state. And then what else do I have written down here? Which is also um that was uh that came up in another one of our re- um that was the one that Arthur's we did. Arthur's no, it was the uh, last episode we did. They uh souls uh there's like a soul state where you just kind of chill out for a little bit. And then there's the also, final judgment after that. They the question is where you go after the final judgment. Have beef. Like they do well, they don't have beef, but they do not Literally. like the church. <laughs> they what? They, they like... do not they do not like the Catholic Church. The Catholic like, they, church. they are like Yeah, they a lot of them will say that oh yeah, they, they are the whore of Babylon in Revelation. Like they, oh, they no. do, Whoa. That's pretty rough right yeah, there. No, they, they Dude, do that's not like, like the Catholic Church. That is such but biblical shade right there. <laughs> like wow. They, they really, really like you know what I'm saying? Like I don't I don't agree with the Catholic Church, but like dang, no, they take it to the next level, man. They're they're straight up like Yeah. This is so, like a Tupac yeah. and Biggie level beef right here. Yeah. And this yeah. is all the religion they can't even eat beef. So I mean, you know that's special. Um well that was a joke. It was a bad one, but work with me. Okay. <laughs> um Okay, so they hate the Catholics. Why do they hate the Catholics? Uh, I I don't know exactly why, but I do know that they they just believe that the Catholic Church is like super super unbiblical and they their practices are just yeah. like heretical and stuff and and I mean and, and I've met non Seventh Day Adventist people that believe this you know so it's not just them but mm-hmm. particularly like they they I I don't even know if they would agree with the fact I don't even know if they would agree with the notion that Catholics are saved like I don't even know if they would even say that. Hmm. Yeah, so, so there's there's a I have a list of like um some of their doctrines, and one that's interesting is actually um a great controversy. You guys familiar with that? Um, uh, all I know is that the, uh, I had that somewhere. Uh, um, oh wait, there it is. Hold on, it's one of their twenty eight beliefs. Yeah, the great controversy. Yeah, I've got it right here. You want me to read it out? Oh, that's a that's yeah, a long dude. that's a long reading. Uh, give us give us the pertinent points. Let's see. All humanity is now involved in a great controversy between Christ and Satan regarding the character of God, His law, and His sovereignty over the universe. This conflict originated in heaven, uh, when a created being endowed with freedom of choice in self exaltation became Satan, God's adversary, and led into rebellion. A portion of the angels he introduced the spirit of rebellion into this world and uh, uh, when he led Adam and Eve into sin this human sin resulted in the distortion of the image of God in humanity the distorting of the created world and the eventual devastation at the time of the global flood as presented in the historical accounts of Genesis observed by whole creation this world became the arena of the universal conflict out of which the God of love will ultimately be vindicated to assist his people in this controversy. Christ sends the Holy spirit and the loyal angels to guide, protect and sustain them into the way of salvation. That's nice. Yeah. Good job. (laughs) So that they're, Yeah. Okay, so I actually I found a website as adventist.org, so I'm guessing this is official. That's where I'm at too. I, I wanted to I wanted to like spend a little bit of time looking into why uh, they got an issue with Catholics. So the first uh, the first few paragraphs are basically saying we're all brothers in Christ. We're all trying to accomplish the same mission, just different principles behind it. So cool, pretty common stuff. But um, excuse me. But there's a paragraph here that's interesting. 
Uh, as Adventists relate to Roman Catholicism in particular, both the past and the future enter into our thinking. We cannot erase or ignore the historical part, a record of serious intolerance and even persecution on the part of the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic system of church government based on extra-biblical teaching, such as at papal, uh, papal primacy, resulted in severe abuses of religious freedom as the church uh, it was allied with the state. We are... Um, and uh, so that's basically what that's that's basically the gist of it. They kind of go a little bit deeper into it. Uh, and I think, like personally, I think that that is not crazy, like at all. Like, because I mean, I've never seen anything in the Bible about the Pope. I'm assuming there's nothing there's in nothing. the Bible about the Pope. Um, so, I mean, you know, if you like hold the Bible like above all else, I mean, yeah, I, that would make a lot of the Catholic Church extra biblical. So. That's, I mean, that's there's there's reasoning there, you know. Yeah. Well, my thing with it is, like I said, I I don't agree with a lot, if not most, of Catholic theology or practice, uh, mostly because there's nothing wrong with having things that are extra biblical that guide you to the Bible and to Christ, or to, that remind you, or that make you focus on it. There's nothing wrong with that, but. I just don't agree with like a lot of like the papacy and with uh once again because I'm a Calvinist because I'm Presbyterian and like having things that are also quote unquote divinely inspired like that's what I would agree with uh the Adventists but I don't know if I would go as far as to say that and I don't know if this is their official stance but I don't think I think that Roman Catholics are saved and I think they're Christian um I think I'll see them in heaven like I said earlier. Um, and I don't know if the Adventists believe that or not. Well, you, in my opinion, have a little, uh, and you know, your uh, specific de denomination have a little bit more of an enlightened when it comes to this, um, because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of Christian sects that do not, um, and uh, of course, other you know religions. I don't want to single out Christians here, but um, that believe that they are the only ones that will experience that ascension for lack of a better term so uh i i applaud actually that that open mind is to other belief systems so that's great that's really cool um but i also understand where you're coming from when it comes to the catholics um i don't know i don't know i i, I find it that actually website was actually incredibly level-headed for throwing so much shade at the catholic church i gotta give them credit for that that was good okay because me, when I throw shade, I don't throw it as level headed as they did. All right. That's the website I'm on as well. All right, my friends. So, uh, so yeah, um, they're, I mean, they're a little bit different, but really, basically, they're uh, an apocalyptic religion, as far as I can tell. Um, That's from what it seems. Yeah, I mean, but a lot of it's pretty basic, you know, Christianity, just not... You know, mm -hmm. rejecting papal primacy, yeah. or, which is they, something that a lot of other sects do, and yeah, I've read this, but I don't think it's anything like big theological lines. Uh, they did some things that are they they tried to predict when Jesus came back during the time yeah. of it, it also was in the 1800s, like Benny was saying. So it was right there with um, Jehovah Witness and the Mormons. They were all right there in the 1800s. During the religious revival in the northeastern, so this is a uh, northeastern instead of uh, Midwest. There, United States, many religious movements began, including early Seventh Day Adventists. Uh, it was during the Second Great Awakening that preacher William Miller predicted Christ's return on October second of eighteen forty four. Uh, when he was wrong, it was called the Great Disappointment. Uh, his following of Millerites split into several groups, including what would become modern Seventh-day Adventists, who said the date was correct, or yes, who said the date was correct, but on that date, Jesus had begun his last phase of his anointing ministry in this uh, sanctuary in heaven, which is another thing that they believe in, um, something called the sanctuary, or the heavenly sanctuary. Seventh-day Adventists believe that there is a sanctuary in heaven set up by God. There are Christ ministers on our behalf. In the first phase of this, called the Ascension, Jesus became high priest of the sanctuary 
1844, at the end of the prophetic period of the 2,300 days, Jesus entered the second phase of his anointing ministry. During this phase, Jesus works. Uh, Jesus' work at the heavenly sanctuary is uh, is on eradicating all sin. So they believe that Jesus is just kind of chilling out up there in heaven. And another thing that they believe that's a little bit different, well, it is different. They they have um, the teachings of a prophet, Ellen White. Oh, yeah. She, they added on. They they high they they hold it really high up there. Um, there are some things that are in there that are like regular deal with topical stuff, um, but some of it they believe it still applies today. Her most n- known work was called Steps to Christ, where she answered questions on how to deal with doubt and also understand the differences between grace and law. It's been hailed as giving a practical approach to Christianity. For example, she writes, prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend, not that it is necessary in order to make known to God what we are, but in order to enable us to receive him. Um, so they don't kind of, they, they kind of add on, but kind of don't. They just kind of hold it really high up there, kind of like, uh, you know, like Protestants do with the uh, Apocrypha, they think it's good for teaching, but they don't, you know, the Bible is still number one. But they, but a lot of them still do follow the teachings of her. So you could almost say that they're kind of, uh, I don't know, they're, they're kind of like the Catholics. They, they, they add on, they, they keep on to the old and they didn't get rid of it. Hmm. Good times. So yeah. Okay. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much them. Yeah. Word up to our Seventh day Adventist friends. Yep. Um, we see you. All right. So um <clears throat> we are getting actually very close to drawing, uh, as far as I can tell, drawing the Christian portion of this uh of this podcast for now to a close. Um, we've hit on most of the major sex. I believe that we're going to um, go a little bit more granular in some aspects, but um, we're getting, we're getting ready to, uh, I think, I think we've hit most of them. And uh, yeah, there's a few we could hit. We could probably hit like Presbyterians. Um, oh, Presbyterians. Yeah. Presbyterians and like Calvinists. That's probably the two. Cause if we go Lutheran or Methodist, it's, it's basically Catholicism. So, yeah. So I think we, then, uh, we don't have to focus on them really. I get, I know Calvinism yeah. is something. Uh, I know Calvinism is something that Benny probably wants to talk about. Something he's super, super. Uh, he talks about a lot. So, um, yeah, we can get into that stuff. Um, we're gonna. Uh, I do. I, it's gonna be about time. Um, I think. I think Benny and I are gonna like see about uh, um, having a having a little conversation on one of our podcasts, and then Nick can moderate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I think that would be fun. I think it'd yeah. be cool. Give Especially us, considering yeah. give us questions I, to ask for that episode in the comments below, please. And uh especially considering I respect Benny so much. So mm-hmm. I, I think it'll be yeah. a lot of fun. Make sure and they're open ended cool. questions too. Not don't make them like one sided questions. Make us think about it. Is pizza the best food? Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's gotta be open. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And so I'm kinda just I'm kinda uh before we wrap up, kinda wanna talk about the future and where we're going. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick and I are going to be looking at our next subject to tackle, um, pretty soon. We're probably got, we, we got a few more episodes and Benny's going to hang out with the Christian episodes and stuff, and we're going to get it taken care of. And then after that, we're going to be looking into our next one. We will probably hit another one of the Abrahamics. So, uh, either Islam or Judaism and, uh, go really mm-hmm. deep into that. Mm-hmm. And that's something I'm super looking forward to actually, because, um, th- uh, most people, have at least a pretty good understanding of, uh, of Christianity. But when it comes to, uh, Judaism and especially Islam, a lot of people I think are very, uh, there's a lot that they could learn yeah. and a lot that I could learn. And so, yeah, um, I don't know how many sects there are or like different, I don't want to say denominations of Judaism and Islam. I don't know how many we can get out of those. I'm and, sure. I'm sure we can make it work. Yeah, absolutely. Judaism had like, uh, reformed or, uh, Hasidic or Orthodox. Oh, you got Messianic. There's like or- yeah, there's like Messianic, Hasidic, and something else. Messianic, Hasidic, and Reformed are the the three. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then in in 
Islam, you have uh, the um, uh, oh my goodness, and it, there's the two big ones. Um, <laughs> oh, the the Shunites and the I probably said that wrong. I completely forgot, but there's 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 two big divisions and oh, okay, okay, branches of it. All right, uh, Shia, the Sunni and the Shia. Sunni and the Shia. There you go. Oh, okay. So we will be getting into all that, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm really stoked. Uh, I hope you guys have been enjoying us so far. I know I've been enjoying making it and learn more about these uh, religious beliefs. Uh, I actually know internally more than before we got started. Um, so that's really great. And uh, I think it might be about that time, my dear friends. Um, do you have anything you want to say in closing before we wrap this one up and move on to the next awesome one? Uh, yes, I would like to say something. Um, uh, even though we said some things that... Uh, may put a downer on these uh branches of christianity i could say um don't ever let us discourage you from finding out the truth yourself so if seventh-day adventist church sounded fine to you or the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints or jehovah witness or the episcopal church uh struck a chord with you uh don't let our negative words if we had them if you interpreted them that way don't let them ever get in the way of you finding the truth for yourself please that's not what this podcast is about the thing is is that uh in order to be well informed about something you have to know about the positive and the negative um and we usually actually believe it or not try to exempt most of the negative from the conversation mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we're not here to bash anybody um we only really bring it up in situations that is so urgent that we feel one of us feels or all of us feel that it needs to be brought up so in the case of the Catholic Church, we you can't avoid the scandals. It's very important. In the case of Mormons, um, I personally um, felt that the whole thing about um, you know the creation of black people should be brought up. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But as to echo what Nick said, um, if if you if the the information for these religions and for these ideas helps you find your own personal truth. Um, then that's awesome, and we're happy about that, and we're stoked, and we've accomplished our mission. Um, and so please, yeah, do not take anything we say as like uh, being like, you know, we have a problem with these guys, um, or we hate them, or something like that, because it's not. It's really, it's really not. We're just, we just want our listeners to be informed, uh, and a holistic picture involves all of that. So yeah, uh, yeah. I have no. That's not that's the last thing I wanted to say. Vinny, you got anything? Uh, no, no, not not particularly. All right, Nick, you know the deal. Take us out, my homie. All right, thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Lorecast Religion. We did a four in one special this time, tackling the uh, lore and history and beliefs of the Seventh Day Adventist Church, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, Jehovah Witness, and the Episcopal Church. Like we said, we'll be uh, getting granular in a few more areas of Christianity, but we're uh, wrapping up on that one pretty much. Um, if you want to check out any of us, check out uh, Devin at BeautyMilk.com. Check out Benny at WiseMexican94 on Twitter. Uh, or check me out at The Original Nick Show on YouTube. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much. And we'll see you guys um, on Sunday for some regular lore if you want to check out like a TV movie music video i don't know we do lore of like regular stuff uh be sure to check us out most likely next thursday uh same time uh 10 p.m eastern 9 p.m central thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys uh next week much love everyone bye <laughs>